Welcome back to another episode of Dentistry's Growing with Grace podcast. Join Grace and her guest of the week as they discuss lessons learned in the industry and explore unique insights into ethical growth. Hi, and welcome back to Dentistry's Growing with Grace. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with one of my favorite people to work with ever, Dr. Greenberg. Dr. Greenberg, thanks for being here with me today. Hi, Grace. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So I want to give our audience a little bit of background about you before we jump into all of the useful information that you're going to share with them. Um, So tell me a little bit about your journey prior to a startup, prior to going, yeah, I'm just going (laughs) to start with nothing ground yeah. up, yeah. what led to that point? Um, so I had practiced for about seven, maybe six years. And I kind of had that bug in my, in my stomach that I wasn't able to grow myself. I felt like it was very routine. I felt like I was doing all the things that I liked doing. I was meeting people that I love. I, I love the patients, I love my coworkers, but there was still that growth that I wasn't able to achieve um, in my professional world. And um, that kind of inspired me to start looking elsewhere, whether it was podcasts or books or whatever it was. And I started uh, expanding where I was able to go. And so I started working at other practices and then that led me to temping. And that also led me to um, finally actually having the, uh, the wherewithal to start my own practice. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit about what was the first, what led you to start up instead of acquire a practice? So I have a little bit of a non-traditional journey in general, but um, for me, I was open to both options, uh, which is, um, it's great on some aspects, but then it's overwhelming because you don't have focus. Um, And so I was trying to um, do a lot of First acquisition, I kind of give myself like a time. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this for six months. I'm going to do a whole letter writing campaign. I, um, as with everything that I do, it's very methodical and um, I like attacked it. And so I contacted any dentist I thought was possibly on the verge of retiring, thinking of retiring, about any, any, any kind of retiring. Um, And uh, short of knocking on doors, that's what I, what I did. And I got some great meetings. I met some people at their own stage in their career, which I thought was actually wonderful. So I got a lot of great advice, um, but it never led to something. And then my startup actually isn't a traditional startup either, because what ended up happening with my networking was that I had a mutual colleague that knew I was looking for a practice to start or acquire met a dentist at a meeting and who was leaving their dental space, um, but they had all their old equipment. And so they were going to sell their equipment piecemeal. And so he's like, before you do that, please talk to Dr. Greenberg. And so we met and she and me connected immediately. And so basically I, she took her patients, she took her name. I had a space that was already a dental space and had been for actually 70 years prior um, in changed over multiple hands. And I had this equipment that actually was, was good. It wasn't failing. And so, um, yeah. And so I ended up rebranding, uh, making sure the finishes were exactly to my liking. And so it was a, what I like to call a startup with a leg up. I love it. Yeah. And, um, I really enjoyed your branding process because most dentists are like, you know, do I really have to pay for this? And can you just put a tooth in my name up there? Yeah. And is this really important? But you came into this going, okay, Grace, <laughs> the brand has to be <laughs> unique. It has to be, you know, something that's all inclusive to my community. And you really attacked this from the right mindset of let's build something different. And that was exciting for me. That's like a little gem for me. I was like, this is going to be fun. So, so talk me through kind of how you, um, took your core values and turn that into your brand for the practice. So, um, I'm going to start by saying the reason it works so well with us is because I trusted you and have continued to trust you. Um, and so when I was shopping for marketing, people, just like I was shopping for a lawyer, just like I was shopping for an accountant, just like I was shopping for all the big players. 
Um, I, I was less looking, frankly, for like what you can create, although I, it was very important to me. Um, I was, that was a given. It's can I trust you as the owner of, uh, of your, your team, your business, and can we make something together that is unique? So that has happened since day one, and I, I will always thank you for that because I definitely feel um, from the moment we talked, it was, it was good. It was, it was good. And so that always made me feel like no matter what was going to happen, you were leading the ship in the correct direction. And so I've always appreciated that. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. Um, Well-deserved, honestly. And so aside from that, for me and my journey in terms of the uniqueness thing, this is kind of a bit of who I am. When people are going one way, I try to go the other way. And not backwards, but just a different direction. Because I feel like in order to make me unique and make me stand out in a city like Boston, where there's... I, I know this like a back of my hand in a mile and a half radius. I have 18 other dentists in my area. So I know like, I know that all the demographics are in my head. Um, they're not my competition um, because I'm my competition. And in order to do that, I have to look like someone else. I have to be someone else. I have to uh, stand by something else. And so um, one thing that actually has been more apparent the more I've been practicing and I've been, I opened up my practice uh, about a year and a half ago is that the practice really is a reflection of you, whether or not you want it to be. Um, and it's because so much as a small business, you put yourself into it, but it takes on a mind of its own. So it will also have its equal strengths and weaknesses. And so you, the more you're aware of yourself, the more you're aware of your business. That's kind of what I follow that path in that journey. And so, um, yeah, I just kept trying to make it more unique, more different. And that's just kind of how I am in general as a person. I love it. You, you say, you know, that you trusted me, you trusted me as the leader of the company and everything. And, and that has served you well, I assume. Yeah. Um, what I want to kind of speak to with that is you didn't, you didn't blindly trust. And I think that's important for people to know that you trust to a point, but that doesn't mean you completely let go of the steering wheel yeah. and you get uninvolved. So as much as you've, you've trusted from day one, you've also had an appropriate level of involvement. Yeah. You. So you've learned how do I, I, I didn't think I would, I, I always thought I had too much, but that's good no. to know that I have an appropriate level. No, it's perfect. Good. You've taken the time you, you take advantage of like the quarterly strategy sessions. You look at the data, you look at the traffic, you yeah. learn how to read the analytics. I can't tell you how many doctors we can't even get on the phone after they sign up. We can't even talk to them. And so it's really hard to show them this is what we're doing. This is how it's acting. Um, we need to be able to pivot sometimes. We start with the strategy and sometimes you find out that we need to put more investment here and we need to pull back there. But without that two-way dialogue, Absolutely. we're guessing. So, yeah. you know, I've really appreciated the fact that as a business owner, I know you don't see yourself as a dentist. You see yourself as a CEO yeah. and yeah. that's rare. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it starts with mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I, in fact, actually, since you've been doing the quarterlies, like I felt progressively more relaxed because invariably what it does is it creates value, which is needed because honestly, as a dental person. I, I have no marketing background, but I do a lot of marketing because I'm a small business owner. I have no choice, frankly speaking. So I'm thrown into the fire in a lot of ways, but a lot of dentists come from the mindset of set it and forget it, pay people to just do it for you. And while on one hand, that's accurate, that's the same poor mentality. For instance, if you just had an assistant that just says, just do it for me. If you don't show them what you want, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to have them be able to work for you? Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the quarterly meetings are everything for me. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you, you take advantage of that and you see value in that, um, with your patients, I want to talk about patient care Please. because I think the biggest, um, most important piece of marketing is how people feel yeah, when yeah. they're in your care. Yeah. Um, I know this is unique about you. I don't have to be a patient in your practice to know this about you. Tell me some of the things that, that you do. You don't have to share everything, but <laughs> tell me some of the things you do that, that you find contribute to that word of mouth marketing. Um, for me, and it's, it's simplest terms is how do you make a patient feel when they've left your chair? Um, 
in all the ways, all the feels, <laughs> all, all the things from the moment they walk in, do they get a good sense of like, again, use their, their five senses. I actually literally do a walkthrough before I opened up the practice. I'm like, what do I want to smell? What do I want to, um, what do I want to see with my eyes? Like, how do I want people to feel? And I decorated accordingly because of that. It feels like a living room because this is our family. And that's the way I wanted to people to feel when they first come into my practice. And then of course the, uh, you know, active listening chair side. I mean, again, these, these are basics, but they're intentional. And I think that's the best way to put it. Even if on the basic level, you do what you want, um, having the intention behind it's so important. And so, yeah, that's what I would do. I just figured out why you and I work so well together. Like it just clicked for me, other than the fact that we're awesome. Um, <laughs> accurate. <laughs> totally accurate. But other than that, I think we have a common ground in psychology. Do you have a psych background? I do. Well, so yeah, I do. I, um, in my undergrad, I, I did uh, psychology and um, I didn't do it just because other people were doing it. I did it because I genuinely I was interested in what other people thought and what their uh, drives were. Um, and I just felt like with psychology, I honestly could do anything and I always wanted to do healthcare. So it was a, it was a good fit. I have been always intrigued by psychology. Um, I, I didn't psych major, but I was a psych minor. Yeah. So enough classes to really pique my interest. Yeah. And then in combining that with marketing, when you combine that with marketing, it's powerful because you're not just thinking about how to say things or what offer to make, but you're, you're actively considering the perception of the person that you're serving. Right. And it, it, naturally will take you to the next level when yeah. you're in that mindset. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so what are some of the things you did um, to set you up for success when you were kind of looking at this, this space? Like, okay, I'm here, I'm doing this, what's next? Um, so just prior to that and kind of what led up to it was a lot of reading just in general. I, I, I'm kind of a you know, I love books. I love to learn about stuff um, and not just arbitrarily, just random things. For me, I, I, I had a, a good set of books, which I'm more than happy to share that kind of just got me in the right headspace. Um, and I, we even, before we got on camera, started talking about this, like when I don't feel like I have control and starting a business, you never really feel like you have control. Although it, to others, it seems like you have all the control in the world. Um, I had to organize and that's my go-to. And uh, when I feel like I've just organized, I have to organize again and then reorganize. And that's what I ended up doing um, for creating an entire pathway for the first six months, first year, first week, first day of the process. That's what I had to do. I love it. So what were some of your favorite reads? So um, the, uh, the Seven Habits um, by, um, who was it? It was uh, Stephen Covey. That's right. The Seven ha Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, that one was like a life-changing book and also a it was it was everything my it, husband's favorite book it's good i, I reread it i just reread it two months ago like i, I just feel like you can always reread that book and just yeah. get a good reminder it's true and I, I do best in structure and so that's it gives life structure um and so that was a that was an important one for me to understand what priorities i had in my own life and that's why i'm able to so concentrate on my business because I realized that was a priority of mine as well. Um, the E-Myth Revisited, which is a common one as well for most people. Um, I didn't honestly love all aspects of the book, but I love the idea of creating systems uh, so that it's much more of a set it and forget it mentality, which is very helpful in a business when you need more hands. I am going to say this boldly. Every dentist needs to read E-Myth. Yes. Whether they take all of it or just pieces of it, because Every other business owner should know this anyways, no. that you start out being everything in yes. the business yes. and yes. then you learn how to delegate and elevate the people around you. And just that mindset is crucial. Even, so. even, yeah, even on its baseline level, like one of the common things people are taught in management is like just focus on your strengths and then delegate your weaknesses. That's true, but you need to know what other people are doing. Because if you don't know what other people are doing and have done it before, I completely, I love delegation. Delegation is wonderful, but you need to know how to delegate them. And you can't if you've never done it before. So I need you to beta test something I'm launching. <laughs> <laughs> it's related to team dental team delegation. So we'll talk <laughs> offline about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to. You'll yeah. be the first one to get your hands on that. <laughs> Fine with that. Because you'll appreciate it. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
So, um, any other books that you think are must haves? Uh, Traction by Gina Wickman. You're going down my list of favorite awesome. books right now. And yeah, well, I feel like the first time we met, I was, I was reading another book that we had, a, I think it was Story Brand. I think I was reading Story Brand. Another one of my, you just I, I made know. like all of my I favorite know, literally. books. Yeah. Um, and then like, this is more psych, but also personal, which also helped me, which is uh, The Gifts of Imperfections by Brene Brown, who like is just my, my everything. I just, again, I, it's, it's such a humbling thing when you can also read that has nothing to do with your business and you need that contrast in your life. You can't just read business. Well, I will argue that perfectionism is a massive problem in business management yeah. and I've suffered from it myself and yeah. learning that getting something done and having it be quality yeah. is so much more important than perfection. Yes, I 100% agree. But I think in dental school, you're taught to be perfect yes. or fail. Like Never. there's no middle ground. And so I think psychologically, I think that's another one every dentist should read. Yeah, I agree. So, I well, that's great. Um, for people that are driving, if you need to email me and get a list of these books, <laughs> let me know. So, um, well, that's wonderful. So take me through your journey a little bit from yeah. startup, gaining momentum. You yeah. know, what were some of the things that you did that, that you think other people should consider? Um, I, the number one advice I give everyone who's thinking about it is, first of all, you don't have to be an owner. Um, and this is why I just wrap them right back to the e-myth, uh, understanding what the motives about why start uh, starting a business or continuing a business is so important and how it's different than what you probably see previously have thought. Um, the next thing, again, and this is all related to your own personal values and your own personal priorities. Um, the next thing I would say is um, have a good plan, have the right people and have the right team that you trust around you. And the most important thing about that is do your due dil diligence in the beginning but then let people be people and do what's good for them. They can't read your mind. You have to guide them. Um, and then from there, trust that they have your best interest at heart. Um, do check-ins, that's ultimate. Um, but you can only do so much. Like I'm a multi, I, I, I have always multiple streams of thoughts at one time and I'm really good at multitasking. With that being said, you cannot do everything. You cannot do everything. And it's surprising how it's very go, 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 stop. And so you have to, you know, during that stopping time, it's about reassessing your priorities, knowing what your values are. Um, that's stuff that you can do way in advance, which is really helpful, and then do check-ins with yourself. But once you have a set of values, you can go to these people, these, these people around you that you trust and say, these are my values. And they will go based on that. They will understand what you're trying to build because you have a framework, you have a reference. Um, and once you also have a set of values, you can make the hard decisions quicker because you can just reference them real quick and be like, does this apply? No, that is not something I have to deal with right now. Um, so yeah. You are so speaking my language right now. Um, yeah. Identifying core values. I literally, I put that in, uh, I put that on a careers page on my website and I was like, don't even apply. If these things don't speak to your heart, don't even apply because yeah, yeah. it won't work out. And then yeah, yeah. I try to test those core values in interview scenarios. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. If you can see alignment before you even bring someone onto yeah. the team. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it all goes back to that psychology yeah. piece. It does, absolutely right. So um, I think one of the things you've mentioned to me is that one of the first things you did was, was interview. Like even when you were shopping for say a marketing company, what yeah. were some of the other um, key advisory roles that you, that you filled and yeah. how did you vet people? Huh. Um, I started the journey uh, by talking to my dental rep who I already had trust in. So I started with a person who I already began with trust. And uh, if you're going in blind, you're not going to know who to trust, but if you have a point person, you can go on from there. Then I started being, you know, making it very well known that I was looking for a practice. So I spoke to colleagues of mine back from dental school, not, and just asked if they knew people and who they would trust and go on from there. I um, bought, bought a cup of coffee with any dentist who I know who did this, um, who I trusted also. Um, and I sat in a few coffee shops, just picking their brain, taking notes and doing what I need to do from there. And then I kind of cross-referenced and suddenly I actually started hearing names, same names kept popping up. So I'm like, all right, I'll definitely give them a shot. Um, I also did a rule of three. So I 
basically saw three people in the same role and tried to get a good feel. Um, some small guys, some big, some big fishes, just trying to see, you know, what, what could, is the difference between all of them. Instinctually for me, I am um, a small business owner, so I wanted to do more small businesses and I wanted to help other small businesses out. I feel like we have the same drive in a lot of ways to be successful for each other, um, which is really helpful. Um, and so in generally my vetting process um, is honestly also my interview process, which is, can I have a reasonable conversation with you and enjoy it? Like just, that's all. Do I like you? <laughs> yeah, do I like you? Like, do I actually want to talk to you again? That has nothing to do with, you know, necessarily the business that we're talking about, because at least based on that, they can they can hang out with me like that kind of thing. And that's fine. And that's kind of one of the things I look for. Um, the other thing is, are they pushy? Are they do they have the same mentality of how, honestly how I would be with my patients? Um, for me, I like to I just heard a quote that was just so wonderful. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this is actually on your podcast or not, because I was listening to a few of those. But everyone deserves the, the, the chance to say no to a great treatment. Um, you know what I mean? Like the optimal treatment. And I want the same from the people that I'm working with. I want them to say, this is where you could be. These are other options. No push. I've educated you. You can make the decision. I can help guide you. That's yeah. it. And uh, from that is what I, I had. And I had a lot of real hard sellers, especially with the marketing, um, where they're just diving down your throat, like no dental pun intended, but like literally just nonstop, nonstop. And I just, I backed away so much and uh, it was, it was, it, that was a problem for me, but anyone who I could have a reasonable conversation who listened to me, but also, and this was especially with you had like, had the strength of character to say, no, I disagree with you for the following reasons. Yeah, I'm really good at that. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that, that's a unique aspect with you. And that is why I did not see that with other people. They either were people pleasers for me. And I'm a pretty strong personality, to be completely honest with you. So I'm fully aware about that. But also, you know, I, I didn't want to um, someone to just guide me the entire way without me having a voice with my own business. So what advisors, oh, yes. like what fields yeah. do you feel people should be... Um, critically looking for dental specific i'm assuming yeah. dental specific it helps Maybe. to have dental specific yeah, but, yeah, yeah that's exactly it yeah, yeah I, I would say my dental rep was important just for the actual equipment um someone again who i trust um i needed to make sure i had my accountant in place i need to make sure that i had my lawyer in place for the negotiations um an insurance agent is extremely important also just throw that one into the mix wouldn't say it was required well there's definitely insurance that's required but of the initial core, they were definitely added on, um, but very important. Um, i trying to think, obviously marketing. I mean, like I, that's, that's a given, honestly, at this situation. Um, yeah, I mean, that was, I would say my core. And then of course my lifelines, like outside of it, just making sure I wasn't lost in space, just the people around me that kept me grounded, kept me sane. That is weirdly a super important about, thing about everything. You need to be able to be grounded. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think all the reading too probably took the place of a consultant. I would say yeah, if somebody's yeah. sitting there going, "Well, I'm going to be working this associateship, and I have three young kids, yes. I may not have the time to read those seven books yeah. or yeah. whatever. So maybe I should hire a consultant yeah. that that can help." Yeah. No, I mean it, it's the consultant really does work. I, I agree with that. At the same time, it's oftentimes like trying to get stuff from a, a hose. You know what I mean? You're just trying to get as much as you can. But I started working full time at two practices and reading a chapter a night, and then just taking notes just before bed. So, so no reality, excuses. Yeah, <laughs> it was, or half a chapter because I fell asleep, or because I got so overwhelmed. Whatever it might be, I found time because people find the time for things that they actually want to do. And so, if it's really the drive there, you will find a find a way to do it. So, as you know, digital marketing takes time to ramp up. It's yes. not an immediate thing. And I know I told you that. And sometimes people don't hire me because I tell them the truth about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you did to connect with your community um, in that interim yeah. while you were building and while you were waiting to get traction from some of the external marketing? Um, I wish I could say that I have the magic solution, but I have a very lengthy list of things that didn't work. So I can share that. <laughs> yes. honestly, I don't, I mean, uh, it was just, I did door to door. I did all the door to door. I got the swag, got the smile going on. This is pre-mask 
So like I could like just be there. I brought my my team member. I had them go alone. I had I went with them. I offered free whitening for local small businesses, and I'm in a very small business centric area, which is awesome in, in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts. So like for me, it's very very. Um, I was all about giving back. People didn't believe me. I didn't have a single person come in for a whitening, and we're talking like chair side whitening, four hundred dollars. You are in a very affluent area. Yeah. yeah. You uh, can't give Boston it away. is a whole yes. But yeah. like Cambridge, not necessarily like this specific area of Cambridge, but yeah. still it's free. And then <laughs> I found out something very interesting, which is people don't actually want free because they don't believe it. So that was another weird marketing lesson that I learned that reduced. You can't say free. You, you could say $1. Exactly. Value it psychologically exactly. more than free. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just from, from the lack of signups to the lack of actual execution. Um, so that definitely didn't work. Um, I tried to do some kind of tabling at local, like YMCA is right across the street for me as an example. They just said, sorry, we just don't allow that. I can't hang out in front. I'm like, okay, I can bring my own table. They don't care. No. But like they're nice people, but they're like, oh, we have to get higher ups to help. I'm like, if, okay. You know what? This whole like guerrilla marketing, yeah. it's, okay, it's good to get the name out there, but it's not as effective as people think sometimes okay. yeah and it's much harder for, and i think i remember having a conversation with you because i was in a pool in florida and i remember calling you and i remember being like it is harder than you thought but yes. everyone hits that point in business yes. and yes. then you catch momentum yes and then you're so grateful that you stuck yes. through it I think what helped me out, um, and again, when I, we've talked about this again, but when I have a control issue, I just have to control something that I'm able to control. And so I actually did my own social media and learned how to do that. And it gave me the ability to be out there and then have control over that. And it may have sucked real bad in the beginning. It but did. Like, it, thank you. But like, for me, it was also, I went back to my values about like, give wholeheartedly to every situation. And for me, I just kind of gave information away. I mean, I, I, I don't believe it. it's it's for me. That's how I feel professionally too. I'm like, I educate every single patient that walks in my door. And that's because I want them, no matter where they go, whether it's to continue with me or somewhere else, to feel that they're inf an informed patient. And oftentimes I'm one of the first people to actually do that. And so that's why I'm really happy to be able to do that. Um, but something that was really cute that I did that I still love and I probably might do that again is I convinced my uh, my fiance now who was then my boyfriend to come out with our basset hound and have a sign over um, over her neck out front of our building and says hot dog uh, we have a new dentist in town and everyone stopped for her uh, my, my, my little baby girl uh, Lila and no one at all stopped for like the flyers that he was trying to hand out so I was like listen it was a fail on one aspect, but it was great on the other because I got a chance to like see all this play out. And that's a, awesome. Good social media up, but that's, that's awesome. you know, we, we, we do, I try my best, but. You know what, you do the things too that are uncomfortable. I remember when that was so uncomfortable for you and I was like, just do it, just push the button and do it. And I have this conversation with so many people and they won't get outside of their comfort zone. And so I think that that's an important lesson for people to take away. Yeah. Um, once you have more of a patient base like you do now, yeah. it's so much easier to get that internal marketing, that word of mouth yes. rolling, because you have something to work with. It's yeah. just that starting from nothing, it really takes some time to gain momentum. Yeah. So um, tell us about from, from going from that hard start yeah. to where you are now, tell us a little bit about that you know how are things now things are going really really well now um I, i'm open full-time before when i started i was part-time um i'm open full-time now we have we're booked basically a month out which is wonderful um at the same time you know small business i'm like i want to be able to get people in sooner and so we can do that with emergencies but for the standard cleaning sometimes it's a little farther out and so I would love to have more. And so we're definitely looking for a hygienist at this point. So if anyone's here and knows a hygienist that is, wants to work for an a, awesome practice in game. A great hygienist. A, <laughs> a great fantastic hygienist. Fantastic hygienist with high, uh, a very strong moral compass. Correct. Dependable. <laughs> exactly. Follows our values of empathy, education, integrity, and fun. Yes. <laughs> definitely our values. 
Um, no, for, for me, it's really just about, um, you know, I, I, I agree with what you were saying as well. Like it is really hard to get outside of your comfort zone and it's a daily process. Um, so, you know, the entire thing has been a learning journey for me. And so where I am right now, I just feel really, um, I'm on sturdy ground because I did a lot of the hard labor in advance. Um, and all I have to really do now is just do check-ins with myself to see where I am. Um, and I'm learning about so much more in the business as we're growing. Um, and so, you know, I think everything starts, um, it's a huge moment to say, I want to start a business. And so the same thing that drove you to that, which incidentally enough is the same thing that drove you to even get into the profession as a dentist. Um, once you can pull from that, it allows you to, to, you know, stretch those muscles and realize you're always a student. And so in some weird way, again, a year and a half in, I feel like I just started, but at the same time, I'm no longer really called a startup anymore. I'm now an established dental practice, which is crazy because I was expecting five years, just real struggle. And it's not exactly the case. Well, you've done a very good job of putting together the right advisors, of working through challenges. Yeah. I mean, you haven't even brought up COVID in this. No, and there's, yeah, you're a hundred percent right. And also, I'm kind of sick of it. I'm, just, <laughs> but, yeah. I'm very sick of it, but yeah, yeah. I think it's just a testament to your mindset and yeah. the fact that you're always going to take whatever situation you're in and say, okay, how do we get through this better and stronger? Yeah. yeah. And to only be a year and a half in though, and to be where you're at right now is a very strong testament to you yeah. and, and to how you treat people, your team, your advisors, and your patients. Yeah. And it's not always easy to be in the moment and to be compassionate and to be patient when you're juggling all these different things, yeah. but um, you're clearly doing a great job. Thank you. No, I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, and I just to take that last bit is is so important. And this is a life lesson I tell everybody is there's not a single person that you meet that can't in some way um, add to the karma of your life, uh, whether it be employee, patient, advisor, even people that you don't at all agree with. There's a strong chance you will disagree on many levels with everyone you've ever met. It's not about that. It's finding what makes the commonalities so important. And I can't tell you how many times it's paid me back in, in so many different ways. Um, and not because I was looking for that. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, and so there was many advisors who I interviewed. It didn't work out. And then some of them actually ended up hearing about me and, you know, referring people to me or some other thing happens. And you, it, the world is way too small. Um, and so people remember a conversation. And I think that's the most important thing. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But um, trust and believe it's so much nicer when you put good stuff out in the world. Awesome. Well, I know that people listening and watching um, are going to get so much encouragement out of this video and audio just because there are so many people who are in it or who may be struggling to start up. And you know it's a lonely place when you're starting and you don't know if you're doing it right. Yes. Um, but everyone should know it gets better and better and better and better. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for joining me today. No, I appreciate thank you, for you. Absolutely. And for those of you listening, um, join our Facebook group, Dentistry is Growing with Grace. We share a, a wealth of knowledge in that group. And um, we're always here for you. Any way that I can help you grow, more than happy to. So have a great day. And thanks for being a part of Dentistry is Growing with Grace.